How you doing guys? Big Matt Dansko here again today, back once again with another Mortal Realms video for you. Woof, I'm getting used to this now saying Mortal Realms instead of Conquest, aren't I? Today, we're taking a look through the pages of issue 3. But before we get started, I want to remind you that you can support the channel through Patreon. Um, I've got my third patron now, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. It's Splinter. Um, it's a an immortal... Um, an immortal sponsor level uh, pledge as well, so that means um, it's going to go towards issue 6. Um, so I've got issue 5 and issue 6 sponsored, but there's plenty of issues after that you can sponsor if you wanted to sponsor um, one particular episode of the Mortal Realm series. However, if you just want to pledge it at a lower level, just um, to help out the channel anyway, uh, you can pledge it at a $1 level or a $5 level. There is going to be some exclusive content, I've already got one video up on the Patreon, um, but it's going to be more like casual stuff rather than hobby related stuff, it's going to be more behind the scenes, getting to know me kind of stuff. Um, at the minute I've had the idea for a coffee tasting, um, I give my thoughts on the coffee, it's just a bit of fun, um, a bit more vloggy style, and also um, potentially movie reviews down the line, um, I say potentially, I plan on doing them, um, but I've not done any yet, um, it's been uh, a week. I, I didn't go to the cinema last week. Unbelievable. I go almost every week. Anyway, you're not here for me rambling on about my Patreon, are you? No. You're here for Mortal Realms. Issue 3. What do we get in Issue 3? Well, we get three castigators and a Griffhound. Um, so, the models in the issue, three castigators and a Griffhound, they're easy to build models again. Um, as, same as last week's easy to build models for the Night Horn. Um, however, we get four in this one. Uh, we get a little beastie, a griff hound. It's like, it's got the body of a cat kind of thing, a cat or a dog, and then the head, well, griff hound would imply dog, wouldn't it? And then the head of an eagle. Um, so it's, I really do like some of the creatures that have come in model form in Age of Sigmar, whether it's the Orc Maw Crusher, or like the Star Drakes and some of the newer Stormcast models. Um, I really like some of the beast models that we've seen so far um, and that's one thing that I do really like about Age of Sigmar um, but I also really like the lore uh, and there's plenty of that in here so let's crack on with the issue. So we get Castigators and a Griffhound, painting Stormcast Eternals and shooting playthrough. The uh, easy to build models themselves are £10 and the we get a pot of paint with the magazine as well which is a £2.75 pot of paint if I remember rightly, it's a Retributor Gold. Um, and so therefore the issue has a total value, or the items that come with the issue has a total value of £12.75. Um, so we're making a decent little saving there, um, almost a 50% saving, or no it is a 50% saving on buying those items separately. Um, turning to the first page, what do we get? Stormhost. So we get to learn more about the Stormcast Eternals and in particular the Stormhosts. Um, it tells us how the Stormhosts are structured. Uh, Stormcast Eternals are organised into fighting forces known as Stormhosts. These Stormhost armies are so disciplined and well organised that they can take on and defeat enemy forces that greatly outnumber them. Stormhosts can be found fighting in the name of justice and order across the realms. And then it further describes how the Stormhosts are split into numerous different organisations um, to divide the forces if you need to and send them to specific areas based on uh, their particular specialities. On the next page it's got some four examples of different storm hosts. So we've got the Hammers of Sigmar first, they were the first storm host struck by Sigmar and the first uh, sent out into the mortal realms in his name. Um, and the Stormblood Guard, the Sons of Malice, Sons of Gladius and Maelstrom of Light. Uh, the Stormblood Guard I'll touch on as well, because this is the first time I've seen these actually, um, to my knowledge anyway. Uh, they are The veteran warriors of the Stormblood Guard are said to bleed lightning. If wounded, they become enraged beyond measure. Uh, touching again though on the Hammers of Sigmar, the first Stormhost to be founded, the Hammers of Sigmar, are a shining example of military order and the use of heraldic insignia. Um, they take the heraldic insignia shown on the armour to the extreme. Uh, they see it as like the, the word of Sigmar that they have to have this um, her heraldry um, plastered all over the armour in particular ways. Um, they see it as like his law. They are 
in many ways, they are comparable to Ultramarines from Warhammer 40,000. If you're more of a 40k player, you can relate to them in that way. Uh, in certain ways, they're not, in that the Ultramarines weren't the first legion of Space Marines made by the Emperor. Um, but they are kind of the poster boys, the Ultramarines, and as are the Hammers of Sigmar, the poster boys very much of Age of Sigmar and of the Stormcast Eternals. On to the next page, um, we've got more about the Hammers of Sigmar. Um, so it goes into greater detail, uh, describing various things. So the first to be forged, never to fail. Um, I imagine that's a battle cry, it doesn't actually say what it is. Um, and then the Chambers of Renown, or various Chambers of Renown, are the Hammerhands. Uh, the Engloriums and the Heaven Wrought. Specialties are the Extremist Chambers. Great Heroes, Neve Black Talon, Bandus Hammerhand, of the Hammerhands, funnily enough, and Asteria Soul Black, Soul Bright, and Famed Storm Keeps, which this is the first I'm hearing of Storm Keeps. I imagine a Storm Keep is just a fortress of Stormcast Eternals. Famed Storm Keeps, Perspicarium. Perspicarium and Fortignis. Um, so, the Hammers of Sigmar were the first on host to be hurled into the mortal realms. Hammers of Sigmar bleed and die every day in the name of Sigmar. Woohoo! They are the poster boys, like I said. Of all the storm hosts, the Hammers of Sigmar have seen the most battles in the name of Sigmar. Time and again, they have been sent down from the heavens into the front lines of the Grand War against Chaos. They know little peace, for they are always in the thick of battle. But the Hammers of Sigmar wouldn't have it any other way. Their constant combat has earned them many great accolades and enhanced their legend greatly. When mortal folk speak of the Stormcast Eternals, it's usually the Hammers of Sigmar to which they refer. And then on the next page, it shows us um, Conclaves, which is like one of the smaller ways to break down uh, the storm hosts uh, it's a smaller element of the storm host basically <clears throat> though the war gear wielded by the different stormcast eternals can vary wildly battlefield recognition is important and every warrior takes care to display the storm host colors and iconography the hammers of stick sigmar stick rigidly to these rules considering them to be sigmar's will as i said on the previous page and then it shows us some examples of various different warriors and how they display their heraldry. So we've got the Liberators here, they've got the heraldry on the shoulder pads. Um, the Liberator Prime only has um, the hammer and lightning symbol, I think, yep, yeah, on his right shoulder pad. And then his left shoulder pad is like a personal insignia, but um, it doesn't actually tell us that here. I'm just assuming based on what I can see in the image. Um, and then the shield displays a hammer and lightning symbol as well. Um, and then the prosecutor with the wings, uh, he's got it on the shoulder pads and he's got these two throwing hammers, which are very exciting things. Uh, judicators, which are the guys with the bows and crossbows, um, they have it again on the left shoulder pad. No, it's the same, yeah, it's the same as the liberators. Um, it's displayed on the left shoulder pad and they've got the patrigues, patrigues, I never know what to call them, the, the leather skirt sort of thing that Romans, uh, you see Romans wearing in old films. Um, yeah, they, uh, they're they the color of, they the same color to match the shoulder pads as well. And then uh, we've got the decimators, rather, retributors and protectors. Uh, these are the guys that step into the line when there's a, a break in the shield wall. They step in to um, take on whoever broke the shield wall, basically, and uh, smite them in the name of Sigmar. On to the next page. The magazine is uh, is falling apart here. You, if, you, if you're new to, if you're in Cla Conquest and you have just started collecting Mortal Realms magazine, don't worry about the magazine falling apart. It's designed to come apart. Um, so you can, uh, it's got these holes in the, like here, uh, that have been punched in the pages and it's designed to go into a binder in a very particular way. Anyway, Stormcast Eternal Castigators. Castigators are are powerful ranged troops that support their allies with devastating weapons known as Thunderhead Great Bows. These magical bows fire bolts that can strike even the ghostly warriors of the Night Haunt, blazing the spirits apart in an explosion of blazing blue light, or rather blasting the spirits apart in an explosion of blazing blue light. A single volley of fire from a group of castigators can banish dozens of murderous spirits in seconds. 
Um, so yeah, they have these magical crossbows with magical boats, boats, bolts. Um, and the bolts actually contain the breath of a star drake. What's a star drake, I hear you ask? Well, it's a giant dragon creature that the Stormcast Eternals sometimes ride into battle. Um, and yeah, they uh, do this ritual at dawn. Um, the castigators seek the help of extremist chamber star drakes whenever they return to the realm of Azir. In a quiet, respectful dawn ritual, the castigators arrange their thunderhead maces into, 12, into a 12 point star shape. The star drakes then exhale their storm cloud breath onto these weapons, filling them with destructive power. In doing so, the star drakes honor their own forefather, almighty Dracothian, the great drake. It was Dracothian who breathed new life into Sigmar before he arrived in the mortal realms. Turning to the next page, we've got Nighthorn. So it's not all Stormcasts in this issue, if you were a little worried. Um, what happened in Conquest was typically you got a little bit about both factions, and sometimes you got something about a third or even fourth faction. So the Nighthorn Processions. It tells us about Lady Alanda, the Mortark of Grief, grief rather. Um, um, it shows a picture here of her leading the Nighthorn to war. After the Necroquake, the Nighthorn attacked the living in a blind rage. Nagash appointed a new commander for his ghostly forces, Lady Olinda, Mortark of grief, grief. Thanks to her great power, Nagash is able to order his ghostly armies wherever they are needed. Flicking over to the next page, uh, it breaks the Nighthorn processions down in greater detail in much the same way that it did for the storm hosts of Sigmar. Um, so we've got Lady Alinda, Mortark of Grief, and then she's got a sort of right hand man or right hand ghoul, uh, Kurdos Valentian, the Craven King. And then below them two, you've got the Shroud Guard, uh, the Knights of the Shroud, and the Bladegeist Revenants. And then lots of lesser ghosts and ghouls beneath them. Uh, we've got Death Riders, which contain Hex Wraiths, Doomblade Harrows, Black Coaches, Spirit Torments are in the Condemned, as well as Chain Rass Hordes and um, Chain Ghasts. The Chain Guard contains Chain Rass Hordes again and Guardians of Souls, Execution Hordes, and so on and so forth. The next page we've got. How to build Castigators and Griffhound. Um, so this just shows you briefly how to build the Castigators and Griffhound. Great news is we still don't need any glue um, because these are all push fit models up to now which is very exciting and very encouraging for the new hobbyists I'd say. And then on to the next page we get how to paint Stormcast Eternals. Uh, we've got two paints so far. We are going to use one paint for the Stormcast Eternals and one paint for the um, the Griffhound. Uh, the Griffhound is going to be painted white primarily and the Stormcast Eternals are going to be painted completely in gold and then you get a nice picture of how they'll look after three thin coats of um, the, the techniques they're showing us. Um, yeah, doing three thin coats, if you missed my last video, doing three thin coats basically gives you a nice smooth finish. If you try and apply a coat without watering it down, a coat of paint without watering it down, you can get brush strokes in there and then it, it detracts from the overall look of the miniature at the end. The fighting escalates. Reinforcements! Anastasia Starstrike and her secretors are being swarmed by evil spirits. Thankfully, reinforcements have arrived in the shape of a unit of castigators. Accompanied by a deadly griffhound, these warriors provide covering fire, allowing Starstrike's warriors to fall back and regroup. The Nighthorn, meanwhile, continue to gather in the darkness, moving in for the kill. So over the course of the next few pages, it shows you how to use shooting attacks in Age of Sigmar. Um, one of the things that has led to me never really going near Age of Sigmar is because there weren't too many shooter units in the game. Um, I like having shooting units. I'm, I'm, I like the idea of futuristic warfare rather than... Um, historical or fantasy warfare um, for some reason I don't know why I'm just more drawn to that I watch more sci-fi than fantasy on TV it's probably just more what I'm into um, yeah so having 
shooter units is important to me in a game. So that's one reason that I've not really gone near Age of Sigmar, but there's more and more, each new release, there's more and more shooting units available for various factions. Some factions will never get shooting units, probably, but um, they'll get some form of uh, ranged attack, it, whether it's um, a weapon on a chain or it's a, a spell weapon, something like that, or a spell being cast, rather. Um, so there's, there's always, more often than not, there's a way to get a ranged attack with each army. Um, anyway, so range support arrives. It tells you what you'll need, as it has done in the previous issues, and then it tells us that the castigators attack. First off, you may remember from the previous tutorials, it told us to make a piling move of three inches. You don't need to do that with these castigators because their weapon can fire. Um, fire? Does it say how far it fires? Weapons. The castigators have a range attack against any enemy. Castigators each get one attack with their Thunderhead Great Bows. Pick one dice for each castigator they can attack. Um, turn into the back page. Castigators. It doesn't actually tell us the range of the weapon, as far as I can see on these pages. But it's basically, uh, you're making attacks the same way you have done in the previous issues. However, it's a ranged attack. It doesn't tell us the maximum range though. Um, if it does, and I've missed it, please let me know in the comments below if you've already got the, the issue and you've a bit more eagle eyed than I. And then, uh, not only do you make the ranged attacks with the castigators, but the Griffhound gets to attack. So after the castigators have fired, the Griffhound gets to make its own piling move and it gets, um, gets two attacks. Uh, two attacks hitting on threes. So in these examples, uh, the castigators themselves take out, take out three chain rasps and then the Griffhound piles in and makes its attacks and takes out two more chain rasps. So that's half the unit wiped out already before they get to hit back. Um, unfortunately, in these examples, uh, they completely surround the Griffhound and they get two attacks each and because they get two attacks each there's a high probability they're going to kill the Griffhound uh, so they kill the Griffhound and then it says play it out till completion uh, till one side has all of its models wiped out it's just simple stuff, simple instructions getting you used to, um, used to some of the mechanics of the game uh, not only that though but it says Afterwards, feel free to swap the castigators for sequitors or the chain rasps for banshees and play through the examples again. Um, the rules you will need in order to do this are below and then it gives you examples of the rules. Castigators, two damage, remove one model, attacks, dice. Yeah, so it doesn't say the range of the, the maximum range of the weapon of the castigators, uh, the Thunderhead Great Bell. Um, however, one thing I will say is it says feel free to take swap the castigators out for sequitors. If you do that, you're not making any ranged attacks, so you're not really learning anything else. You're just uh, going through the motions again. Um, so I'd just be more tempted to swap out the Nighthorn models for the um, Mermon Banshees um, and see how they go against the castigators. Anyway, that's enough for this issue. It's more or less done. What are we getting in next week's issue? Well, we're getting... Glaive Wraith Stalkers. These boys have big spear type weapons and there's a drummer as well. Oh, it's very exciting. They've got sort of horse heads um, or rat heads maybe. They've got quite a, uh, a ratty-like ratty maw there. Um, we're also getting Nihilap Oxide and a large battle mat. Oh, it's going to be bigger than the one we've got already. And then the following week, in issue 5, we are getting Xandria Azurbolt. Oh. She is the exclusive model for Mortal Realms. Um, she looks familiar to me, though. <laughs> she looks a bit like. Um, it's probably not this model, but there was a magazine you could buy when you were just getting into Age of Sigmar, and it came with a, a sort of um, a model very much like this. Um, probably the same, same unit type. Uh, or a different character name, I would have thought. Um, anyway, yeah, that's that's it for this week. That's it for next week and the week after. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, do you think it's good value? Uh, are you looking forward to getting any particular models or anything else you want to ask me? Don't forget to check out my Patreon, as I said. Uh, there'll be a link in the description below. I'll try and remember to pin a comment as a link as well. 
Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the battlefield.